What's going on guys, this is Rob, and you may have heard that Zack Snyder's Justice League is coming to HBO Max on March 18th. And if you're not someone who closely follows the behind the scenes happening of the DC Extended Universe, you may have thought to yourself, didn't that movie come out like three years ago? And yes, yes it did. But this time, it's different, supposedly. You see, the film we saw released in 2017 represented only half of Zack Snyder's original vision for the film. But to fully understand what's going on here, we need to first explain the DC Extended Universe. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, for the past decade and some change, there's no doubt that you're familiar with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the best highest grossing film franchise in history whose 23 films have grossed over $22 billion worldwide. Well, naturally, Warner Brothers saw how much success Disney was having with their superhero movies and thought, hey, we own the rights to some superheroes. Let's produce movies featuring those characters. We won't put in as much effort, but we'll be just as successful. And so that's what they set out to do. So Warner Brothers decided that the foundation of this franchise would be a solo film about their most well-known character, Superman. And this is a completely logical move for them. After all, if the Marvel Cinematic Universe could be built on the foundation of a movie about Iron Man, who at the time was an incredibly obscure character outside of comic book fandom, then using the most recognizable superhero on the planet to launch a franchise should be super easy to do. So, in 2019, Man of Steel premiered, directed by Zack Snyder, who'd had some success with comic book adaptations prior to taking the helm of Man of Steel with 2006's 300 and 2009's Watchmen. And this movie proved to be pretty divisive among critics, with a fairly middle-of-the-road rating of 56% on Rotten Tomatoes, with the main criticism being that it focused mostly on big-time fights and action scenes without really doing much character development or telling a compelling story. And to a degree, it kind of makes sense. Zack Snyder's just a mini Michael Bay. And although the fan reaction was mostly positive, some longtime Superman fans were put off by the darker, grittier tone of the film compared to past Superman movies as they felt it didn't fit the character. Now, while we've all gotten used to seeing a dark, gritty Batman and Christopher Nolan trilogy of Batman films were very successful and well-received, this particular tone doesn't really fit Superman, who's used as a symbol of hope instead of instilling fear in his enemies like Batman does. Now, Man of Steel would end up grossing $668 million worldwide, which was successful enough that Warner Brothers felt comfortable using it to launch their connected film universe. So they decided to make a sequel to The Man of Steel, with Henry Cavill reprising his role as Superman. And for this sequel, they decided, you know what, we're putting Batman in this movie. And I think this was really a screw-up on Warner Brothers' part, because while I understand that everyone knows who Batman is, so you don't necessarily need an origin story, this whole thing felt rushed. What made the Marvel movies so successful was the shared universe that all their heroes inhabited. And that's why Avengers was the biggest movie of all time when it came out in 2012, because fans wanted to see these heroes share the screen. But what Marvel did prior to the Avengers was establish all of the heroes in their own solo movies. We didn't get Iron Man and then the Avengers. Instead, we got Thor and we got Hulk and we got Captain America. They all got their own movies. And I Iron Man even got a second solo movie before they were all thrown together. And so instead of copying this ultra successful blueprint, DC decided to go the wrong way. And when I say DC, I technically mean Warner Brothers, DC's parent company, but you guys know what I mean. So in 2016, Zack Snyder's second film in the DC Extended Universe, Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice premiered. Henry Cavill reprised his role as Superman and a new Batman was introduced, played by Ben Affleck, who I thought was a great Batman. And the primary motive for this movie, as its name implies, is to set up a Justice League movie as an answer to Marvel's Avengers. According to critics, the movie suffered from many of the same problems at its predecessor, relying too heavily on special effects and action scenes at the expense of story and character development. And they really just panned it. I mean, to the tune of a 26% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. And this movie was really asked to do a lot of work. In addition to introducing Batman, the film also introduced two major villains, Lex Luthor and Doomsday, and just for good measure, introduced Wonder Woman as well. So you can imagine, this movie was pretty long, two and a half hours. But even so, this is just a lot to cram into a single film. Now, once again, a lot of viewers were put off by the overly serious tone of the movie and didn't like that it was basically devoid of humor, which had been something fans had come to expect in superhero films due to the popularity of the Marvel movies. But still, the film made $873 million worldwide and DC plowed ahead, building towards the Justice League film. And this is where we can finally get into explaining what the Snyder Cut is. So, Zack Snyder is back directing the Justice League film, which will see Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman return and introduce even more heroes, namely Aquaman, The Flash, and Cyborg. But getting this movie to the big screen was a difficult process. Not only had Snyder's previous outing, Batman vs. Superman, been poorly received, but the next installment in the DCEU, Suicide Squad, didn't perform so hot either. And so Snyder had co-written a script with screenwriter Chris Terrio, which according to Snyder, was really ambitious and featured Darkseid, one of DC's most popular villains. But this version of the movie never got made. Instead, Snyder and Terrio began rewriting the script to have a more hopeful tone and brighter color palette. To aid in this process, Warner brought in acclaimed comic 
comic book writer Jeff Johns to help with the script rewrites, and Ben Affleck was also part of the writing process so the Justice League would flow seamlessly into the Batman movie, which he was supposed to direct and star in. The result was a much less ambitious and pared down script. Now, despite a bunch of rewrites, Justice League got filmed, but during the post-production, Zack Snyder left the film. And so Warner decided to bring in Joss Whedon, who you guys might know as the director of the Avengers, among other things, to basically finish this film. Now, after Whedon was brought in, it was announced there would be reshoots of certain parts of the film. And when the film was released in theaters, it was substantially different than the version Snyder had created when he left the project. Now, according to Snyder, he hasn't seen the theatrical release of Justice League, but he says that based on what he's been told about it, they only used about 25% of his material. Others who worked on the movie have said, however, that around 80% of Snyder's film made it into the theatrical release. But that seems unlikely since Snyder's cut of the film is four hours long, and the runtime of the theatrical release was only two hours. And so at any rate, the film was not a commercial success, grossing $658 million at the box office, substantially less than Batman vs Superman, and critics generally met it with negative reviews as well. That includes me. So at this point, DC kind of gave up on the extended universe, assuming they even tried in the first place. The Ben Affleck Batman movie never really happened, nor did the planned sequel to the Justice League. They kept Wonder Woman and Aquaman, and their solo movies were generally met with more enthusiasm by both fans and critics than any of the other Snyder DC movies had been, which makes sense because Wonder Woman and Aquaman were amazing. But there was a significant contingent of fans that blamed Justice League's failure on Joss Whedon, claiming that his reshoots had ruined the movie Snyder had planned. Now, I don't really know what led them to believe this, since none of them actually knew what was in the Snyder Cut, or knew with any certainty that the Snyder Cut even existed at that point, but they really believed it with a passion. Maybe they were just legitimately huge fans of Snyder's signature dark and gritty style, or maybe they were just hardcore DC fans that were desperate for the DC movies to be as good as the Marvel movies, so they just chose to believe that this unseen film was a masterpiece, instead of facing the undeniable truth that the Marvel movies are far superior. Who can say for sure? But anyway, these fans started a petition to release the Snyder Cut, which got over 180,000 signatures, and there were even members of the movie's cast and crew, most notably Jason Momoa, who played Aquaman, who advocated for the Snyder Cut to be released as well. Fans were so devoted to this cause that they crowdfunded ad space in Times Square to coincide with New York Comic Con, which is actually a pretty big achievement, so kudos to you guys. Unfortunately, with that passion came some toxicity, and while I'm sure most Snyder fans do not fall into that category, the movement did develop that reputation due to instances like the former president of DC Entertainment deleting her Twitter account due to being harassed by Snyder fans. Something I'd like to point out here for all the casual moviegoers out there, most of us as comic book fans are not people like that. Like, we're normal people. We have social skills, and we have common sense, and we know how to express our irritation and frustration without taking to social media and just lambasting you for having a different opinion. We are not those guys. So as for Snyder himself, he was supportive of the movement, and in 2019, he confirmed that his cut of the film did in fact exist, putting the ball in the court of Warner Brothers as to whether it would be released or not. Later that year, Snyder entered into discussions with Warner Media to finish his version of Justice League for a release on the new HBO Max streaming service in 2021. And so Snyder began working on the movie, but the production suffered some complications due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But in May 2020, Snyder announced that the film would indeed be released as Zack Snyder's Justice League on HBO Max. Now, finishing the movie proved to be an expensive endeavor, with several of the film's actors, including Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck, as well as some of the actors that had not been in the theatrical release coming in to shoot additional scenes. According to Snyder, all this was done for four to five minutes of new material, which it seems like the juice wouldn't be worth the squeeze here, but I don't know. That's just me. Anyway, in January of 2021, Snyder announced that his version of the film was complete and that instead of being released in four one-hour installments as originally planned, they're going to release the entire four-long movie on HBO Max on March 18th. So yeah, that's the story of Zack Snyder's Justice League, or the Snyder Cut, as people call it. And I'm curious to know your guys' thoughts on it. Are you excited that it's finally getting released? Or does the fact that the DC Extended Universe has largely been abandoned dampen your excitement? Let me know in the comments section. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this to an end. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you all later. Peace.